Thank you very much. I won't use it because uh, I think that I have a reasonable voice to be heard from all around. First of all, I would like to thank the University of San Gallo for inviting me uh, because uh, I have to recognize that when I was young, it was not exactly my cup of tea and I would never study here because uh, uh, marketing, management, uh, business and so on was not exactly what I was uh, fond of and loving and uh, because I, you can see, I'm not very young and I'm of course a byproduct of uh, May 68 in France. So I studied law in Paris and I had an active uh, position with my friends of the Maoist party and so on in Paris. So thank you for inviting me, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come back perhaps from in a place where I would have to come one of these days. And I'm very happy to be here. I would like to thank, of course, Angelica for having found me in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, I think it's important to be here. It's a great opportunity. And the first time that we are going to play uh, Quatre Mains au piano <coughs> with Nicolas. So please uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't be too exigent or exhaust too much from us. Uh, as a mini entrepreneur, I had no idea at all of what I wanted to do uh, and in my universities. And uh, I took, of course, and I have to recognize the easiest way. I went to Sandoz at that time and uh, I asked him, uh, I would like to go to a land of frontier, I would like to go to Asia, I would like to go to China, I would like to go in any country like this. At that time, I was speaking a, a reasonable French, uh, uh, English, and uh, finally they offered me Brazil. And Brazil, why not? Brazil was, of course, something quite uh, different. It was a huge country. It was a, even for the company at that time, it was a huge challenge. And for me, it has been really a great opportunity to work there during uh, three years at uh, Sandoz in São Paulo to know the country, and of course, to fall in love with the country, to fall in love with the people, to fall in love with the culture. And I basically decided to stay. I, of course, I have in my blood this entrepreneurship, uh, which coming from my great-grandfather, who founded Sandals. I like nature, and I like challenges. So I decided to buy a Jeep, and I went around in Brazil looking for a place where I could probably realize something which could be interesting for not only me, of course, but also for the people who are living there. One of the most uh, complicated regions that you can find in Brazil was the Northeast. It's still one of the clue of the future of Brazil because actually they are in a very complicated situation. And uh, I decided to buy a farm uh, in uh, you see, well, I decided to buy a farm in the northeast, in the semi-arid region, which is, uh, of course, also another challenge, not only because uh, it's poor, but also near of Patus. So you can see, uh, this is the most interesting point of uh, the, the Latin American continent, because the first ray of sun is happening there. <laughs> so it's easy to find on the map because it's very important. So Patos is really in the middle of nowhere, is a very dry region, is a very big challenge and was for me of course something very important. I had to learn first of all humility. Humility is without any doubt something very important and you have to hear of course I, I spent almost one year trying to understand the place where I was, trying to uh, really cave all everything to understand what was uh, my challenge in front of me and I understood that I could be really a bridge a bridge in technology between Europe and uh, Switzerland and uh, the northeast of Brazil a bridge also and a solution probably for using better all what we had soil water and of course uh, to try to help people to have an access to work uh, have an access to decent conditions of life. Uh, tough challenge, no doubt, uh, but it was uh, really successful and I looked at the capacity and the possibility to go organic, 
and uh, going organic, of course, we are giving more value to our products. Uh, we went uh, to, uh, we, we tried to integrate new farmers, principally with mangoes, and I'm going to give you some photos of the place. This is the famous uh, Fazenda Tamandua. It's not always like this, of course, it's during rainy season, and you can see all the dams, which are definitely our salvation, and we have to use this water, of course, of the best way. Drought is, of course, part of the, of the game, uh, and we have seen that uh, climate change is each day more complicated. The cycles of drought always existed, and today we have really uh, cycles each year more complicated. Here you can see the mango tree, which is one of our biggest activities. The mango trees, we are actually definitively uh, biodynamic certified with the they made a seal and uh, selling basically fresh fruits uh, to Europe and also the famous uh, pulp actually is sold in the United States. This you can see the contrast of course of using uh, water with the best way. You have uh, the, dry, the dry scenario up there and in front of you melons and watermelons grown, of course, with an organic processes, and which is one of the big products. We are also breeding bees, as you can see, which are working for us and uh, pollinizing all our products during the season. One of the things which is important is, of course, to try to find crops and to find solutions for this region. Uh, it was amazing to see that uh, pomegranate was not explored in a systematic manner and uh, we decided to grow pomegranate. And in this process of biodynamic, where you have uh, the interaction between the animal and the agriculture, we are breeding also uh, sheep and uh, producing lambs uh, for meat, also organic in the region. So you have this uh, integration of the animal, which is definitely <coughs> a solution for things. You can see that we have, of course, with the best cows in the, in the <laughs> of the world, the famous brown Swiss, and the brown Swiss is very happy there. They have horns because uh, for the biodynamic process, the horns is part of the game because it's a kind of antenna to receive the strength of the, the cosmos. Uh, <laughs> so you can see exactly the, all the mango. This is the season of mango, three months. And uh, we are actually working with, uh, during the crop, we are working with more or less 100 people and offering, of course, uh, work for the ladies, signing generally and signing a, a contracts of three months. We are producing cheese, goat cheese also, and, uh, uh, and this is uh, something that you're going to see in a few, which is exactly what we are working and what we are doing. The second step, I, I understood that, of course, the fazenda was something very personal, an engagement, and that I had also to look to the people around in the region. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet uh, the people of the microcredit uh, through the Mr. Rubens Ricupero, former minister of, of, uh, of Brazil, of the economy. And uh, it was really a shock and I understood that I could do something also to help the people of my region. The Northeast is traditionally a region where of immigration, people are leaving the Northeast, and uh, it was an opportunity, of course, to give them the possibility to work on this place, to do not uh, leave their country, to do not leave their land, and uh, of course, microcredit is something very interesting. More than 70% of our clients are women, and uh, it's working quite well and growing quite well. And we are very happy. And one of the very interesting things that we are, going, we are working with is uh, taking these uh, informal, informal people to the formality through a process helped by the uh, Brazilian Institute of Sebrae, which is working quite well with us and uh, giving to these people also to be a real part of the economy, which is something important. 86, drama. I've been elected member 
of the Sandoz company, Basel. So I had to think about what, so what time am I going to do? I have to work uh, both in Brazil and in Europe. Then I've been elected by my sisters and brothers uh, chairman of the Sandoz Family Foundation, and I realized that my small paradise, where in the meanwhile uh, Nicolas, uh, Charlotte, and Luana were born, was no more the solution. And I had, of course, to think about uh, growing with everything, and uh, it was not so easy. And then I had to realize also another dream, another dream which was exactly to think about other models. This personal adventure that was we living was very important, but I decided also to make and to build some real startups. And so we founded the Mariterre, Natural, Rio de Una, three companies that Nicola will show you or will present you. And uh, it was quite interesting to think that I was a bit worried at the beginning. I, I did remember exactly what my great grandfather. Edouard Constant, the founder of Sandoz, did. He founded Sandoz in 1886, and in 18, uh, it has a the company had a big growth, and uh, he realized that uh, he had he was not more he was not no more able to to manage the company. He left uh, the executive part. He really began to trust in the management he had, and he became member of the board and, of course, an active shareholder. I think this, at the 19th, during the 19th century, was not very common to have the founder of a company who really understands his limits, understand that he have to give his son to uh, people probably more competent, and I thought that it was exactly what I had to do. I had to delegate, I had to find the right team, and probably I could have a really an action and a bigger action that I had. So these companies are actually in the south, in Sao Paulo. Fazenda uh, Tamandua is in the south, is in the northeast, of course. Institute Israel, of course, in, is in the northeast. So basically, I think that's what I wanted to, to tell you, because uh, to delegate is always something of uh, the big responsibility. I think that with Nicola, I found uh, really uh, somebody able to help me. Because, of course, I was not, uh, I didn't study this kind of thing. Uh, Nicola has, is much more well organized than me. And uh, he's able, of course, to make a success with these companies. Uh, one thing, one interesting thing is always to try to look at the real impact of your business and your companies. And uh, at the Fazenda Tamandua, we were receiving monthly the people of uh, the Institute of uh, Statistics and uh, UBGE. How do you translate it? Um, yeah, it's the governmental agency to, to that produce the, the general uh, data about population, age, and income. So each 10 years, they are publishing the, the census. <laughs> and uh, I've been really surprised when the guy came at the farm and gave me the last result, uh, 2010, and you can see one of the most interesting, Santa Teresinha is the place, the city where, uh, where is the Fazenda Tamandua. And you can see the growth of the, of the, 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 the income. income of the people. It's absolutely incredible. I ask him, are you sure that it's not a mistake? And I know it's you, and it's exactly for that reason I wanted to give you this document. So I've been very happy to see that. 503% of growth, uh, instead, uh, in, in, and the city of Patos, which is uh, 12 kilometers away, only grew 53%. So it's very interesting to be able to, to look and to, to realize that our impact is measurable and important. And this is exactly because we were able to bring a new vision for the region. We are today integrating new farmers. Uh, principally for, for mangoes. In a few, we are going to make the same thing also with our lands. And uh, it's, of course, still a challenge. And the new challenge today is also in the south. And Nicolas will speak about this. Thank you very much.
good afternoon and thanks a lot for the opportunity of speaking today. Thanks a lot to Angelica and the St. Gallen University. I would like to say that it would have been a university that I would have picked, maybe not his, but <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I did not know St. Gallen then. I, I chose an, uh, another university, but with the same idea and the same. So I went to European Business School in, in London, but uh, it was, <laughs> it could have been St. Gallen. So. Uh, it's great to know St. Gallen, and thanks a lot for the opportunity of being here. So Axel Holding actually is it's, uh, it's the, is the replication of what Pierre has started in 1974, 76, when he first arrived in the zoo. And it's the idea of, 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 of continuing or replicating in some ways what um, Pierre has created in the, in the northeast of the zoo. And by doing that through other investment in different regions of the zoo, where uh, less, less, less uh, fortunate region of Brazil, and uh, so we, we had to replicate that through investing companies and, and through different ways. So to do this kind of investment, we follow triple bottom line investments. So what we did is we have to have a social in, a impact, an environmental impact, and of course it has to be feasible. So we believe, Pierre and I believe, that if you don't have this type of, of, of things together, you are not able to go uh, the, the, your project will not, will not go further in time. So we wanted those three to be to work together because we think that the combination of those three factors are quite important. So now I'm going I'm to give you an idea of exactly what, what we have been doing and since when we started. So we started in 2000, in 2000 like Sarah was born, and we've done a, a variety of, of investment. Uh, most of our investment nowadays are in agribusiness. In 2000, we had a few difficulties to find investments that were uh, that could have these three types of uh, social, environmental, and and, to, and be feasible. So, and also in less um, in, a, in a more rural area. So we, we we decided to go into agribusiness since this country is an agribusiness country. So uh, we invest in Hiljuuna. I will go and explain you a bit more about it. It's a fresh cut company, fresh cut organic company. So we work with uh, fresh products. Naturali, a soy company, uh, Maritara, a uh, fish farming company, Axel Gestan was the management arm that was, had nothing to do, but it's still to do with it. AgriCert is it's a farm, and I'll go one or three or one. And the future is Silla Bras, Itochu, and uh, the London project. So, first of all, I'll, I'll like to speak about Hugeuna. Hugeuna is, as I said, a fresh cut company. The idea is that we do integration of small and medium farmers. We work mainly with uh, organic products. So what we do, we give um, technical support and we give a contract of repurchasing the, the product that is produced by the farmers. We do not have a contract for the total amount of the production. We, we buy up to 70% of the production. That's written down in a contract that is valid for the farmers to go to a bank and get a loan saying that they have sales uh, I, I'm going to come their way so therefore they can finance themselves and finally get out of, 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 of being a very small farmer. Because uh, the, the plan before, before I think, before Hyojuna, those farmers really had no mean of getting out. They, it was just farming of subsistence. Because they would work, go to the market, sell it. They had no control over the price they would get for the product. So they didn't really know what would they get as an outcome. If they would get good money, bad money, they, they didn't know anything. And they would come back and it was just leaving, barely leaving. So with, Natura, with Hyojuna, we provide this contract. So we, we buy back the products. Uh, and, and we, we package, process it, packages, and commercialize it. So from the, um, so as you can see, we give them techn technical support, and you mainly all our, our farmers are, are, are families. So they, uh, we work with around 150 farmers in, 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 the, in, 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 this, in this model. So here, Juna is in the state of Paraná, located in the city of San José dos Pinhais, next to Curitiba, the capital of the state of Paraná. We originate product, product, uh, products from uh, all over, from, from the state of Minas Gerais, São Paulo, Paraná, Rio Grande do Sul, and Santa Catarina. So we buy products from different regions, depending on the time of the year. So we do help quite a few uh, communities and people in those areas. And we use also the IBGR to understand what are the, less, the poorest area and where is, the, where is it more complicated for people to have an income. So we use IBGR as a guideline to be able to know where those people uh, where are the, the, the most needed people on the states, on, the, on this, those states, and then we come the technical team and we come with the support and the rebuy, repurchasing the products. That's huge. AgriCert it's, um, has, it's more of a, of, a far, of a company that has a, a social impact in, in, in the land. AgriCert is a farm company, so it's specialized in farm. I think that if you 
we speak of Brazil, we are it's a country that is very oriented into soy and corn uh, production. And uh, the idea of Agrisa is to, is to have, uh, to uh, use technology to increase the, the yield of farms. Because we believe that uh, Brazil has a lot of arable land, a lot of its arable land is not being used for agriculture. Deforestation is a problem in Brazil. And, um, and oh, it's a non-GM farm, Taylor just remind me that. And, and the idea is that, is that uh, deforestation is a big problem with Zoe. But we believe that maybe if you have a better use of land, if you know how to get the best outcome through technology, you can get more yield from the farms, not yield, sorry, protein per hectare. Uh, and, 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 uh, and so this was, uh, Agrisa is a company specializing that, in, in taking farmland that I supposedly has reached its peak of production. And, and what we do, we use technology to be able to increase the yield of those farms and therefore not having to stress uh, and, and to go to new frontiers of land in Brazil and causing deforestation. So that's, and this, this, this project is only in the state of Goiás. Uh, that's where we started and now we are thinking about expanding, but we're not, so far we're not, we're not expanding. We might be expanding in the next coming years. Maritea is a fish farming company. As you can see, none of the species, I guess you've ever seen them. I don't know if anybody has seen those species of fish. We are specialized as well in a fish farming uh, of fish that are native from, the, from, from Brazil. Uh, they are native from uh, two different regions, one of the Amazon region. Some of them, like the, those two fishes are from the origin, uh, from the Amazon region, and those two fishes are from the Pantanal region. The Pantanal is a less famous area in Brazil. It's as, as beautiful as the Amazon, but it's, it's not as famous. I do not know why, and I would much recommend that you go and visit this area because it's as beautiful as the Amazon. So we work with, with, with uh, Brazilian native species, and the reason why is that Pierre <coughs> noticed that there was a big impact in fishery of wild Brazilian fishes, and they were over, there was overfishing. Even though there are laws in Brazil that do not allow over, uh, fishing, and there are seasons to be those fish to be fished, and, and uh, the, this is not being followed by, 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 the, by the book. So we decided to invest into not only uh, R&D uh, of, of those, how to reproduce those fingerlings, so those two species, all the species are, we do the fingerlings, then we work with uh, third party farmers, small and medium farmers again, same thing as here Juna. We give the fingerlings and the technology, we have a technical team that goes to the farm, we, clo we work closely with the government of Brazil that gives all the, all the, all the, all the, all the, all the, of the cities or the state or that provide the <coughs> farmers, the small and medium farmers, the capacity to dig a pond. So they have, the city wants to, to those, those farmers to work, so they give them the, the machinery to build a pond, then after we give them the, the fish, they breed the fish, they feed the fish. Uh, they are not tied to our, to our contract. They can just buy the fingerlings that they want. If they want to sell it back to us, they can. If they want a contract with us, they can. And if they want to buy the feed from us, they can, but they're not obliged. None of this is it's compulsory. It's all moddable to whatever the, the, the farmer wants. Um, Interesting thing about this fish, about especially about the Amazon. The, the, I'll, I'll actually show you a little video later on to understand better my time because it's quite an interesting company. So as you see, those are our pond because we decided that at first we had to farm our own way, our own farm, to be able to know what the, the yield, the income, uh, the output of each of these farms. So we, we had our own farm as a test. So before we could say to farmers to do that, we wanted to test ourselves to see if there was an income and we decided to share this income with so that's our only farm, by the way. Those are processing facilities in, in Mato Grosso Sul State. Uh, we are currently commercializing these products in the US. Uh, if you go to any Whole Foods in the US or HEB, you'll be able to find the Piaroku fish. And uh, you might be able to find it in, in Poland, uh, yeah, Japan, <laughs> uh, Germany, and Switzerland. Uh, of course, we are based in Brazil, so I was telling you. Some of the, the, the fish that were on this side are farmed in this area, area which is uh, the Ligo Amazon. So the Ligo Amazon of Brazil is here. Even though this is the Amazon state, the Ligo Amazon of Brazil is here. We farm fish in all those states, depending on the, on the, the species that we farm. And uh, we have two processing facilities, one in the state of Sao Paulo and one in the state of, of, uh, of uh, Mato Grosso do Sul. One more interesting company is uh, Naturale. Naturale is a quite interesting company. We have, uh, this is actually, for me in some ways, it's, it's the, one of the most complicated invested companies that we have to understand how Pierre foresee that 
in the past because uh, I think that in, in when we when we did this investment in 2001, uh, Pierre already came with the idea that the future was going to be protein per hectare. As I was speaking, it's not yield per hectare. All farmers are orientated nowadays. All research in Monsanto and and all those uh, research companies, are, are seed companies, are, are, are all going towards one direction. They've always been going towards one direction, which is yield per hectare. So it's how many bags of soy that I can get per hectare, increasing the, the income of farmers. And actually what we found out is that it's not this way. This is not the way to go. And I think that what the customer wants is the most important thing. Of course, all the time is the customer. And uh, we understood the customer is not buying soy, he's buying protein, he's buying soy protein. So Naturale started in 2001, uh, researching and developing white eel, high pro, uh, soy, uh, non-GM for the Asian market. It took us a very long time to break through the Asian market. As you can see, this is our research. This is our research plan in, in the northeast. So each little square that you have here is at breeding stages of, of, of soy. We have over 80,000 different families of soy that we breed together, depending to this specification and demand of our customer. So it's, it's a completely different concept from what we had known. It's not bulk, it's not in big amounts. It is, uh, it is a tailor-made, it's tailor-made soy. So if you want to give you an idea, nowadays soy varies, the protein of soy varies between 27 to 32% of, of protein. Our soy is not a single species of our soy is under 42% of protein and we work until 52% of protein per hectare. Of course, there's a downside to it, which is we have a lower yield. But then there is still, there is still, we have actually, if you do the calculation between yield versus protein, we still are 10% above, above um, non GM crops that I know. So, Naturale is uh, commercializing, was well, focused in Southeast Asia, but we have been, we have sold, uh, uh, we, have, we have some customers in Spain, Leche Pascual. If you drink, drink any Leche Pascual, you are drinking Naturale soy, Portugal. Uh, some feed companies in, in Norway and Sweden. Um, right now, sorry. And in Brazil, we are we now originate soy from all of Brazil. There's just one mistake on this map. I know this Brasilia is not a stable producer. <laughs> but anyways, so we, we are we are we are working depending on on on, uh, on what type of, of products we are we work with. We work in a different 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 state. Mapito. We do not work. Yeah. Remind me one more time. We do not work again in the Mapito Bar, which is this region. We do work in Bar, but we do not work in Mapito. We do not farm in any region that is good. Oh, yes, sorry. Mapito Bar is the new frontiers. Brazil is uh, going through a, a lot of it's a very hot topic, and people, a lot of people are investing to the, in the token teams. Uh, sure. uh, okay, so in the Amazon region. In the Amazon region. So, this, the north of the state of Mato Grosso, we do not work with it because this is the Amazonian region. Even though it's considered in the books as, as a, a Cerrado, it is not a Cerrado. If you've been there and, you, and you've, been, you've been in this region, the Cerrado is actually... When I've been there, I saw there were big trees, and that's, not, that's the Amazon for me. But um, as it's considered Cerrado, you can cut down up to 70% of it. So actually, you, you, you do have a great impact on the environment. And we do not work, so all our... We work with origination of soy, so as we have a foot in the origination of the soy, we do not buy soy that are coming from origins. That's personal, that's not, a, that's not for the customer. The customer doesn't buy that. We just do it because we think that we have responsibility and we should not originate soy from regions that do a well close stress on the Amazon region. So this is just a quick graph to understand and to explain you how many jobs that are created. So we are, we are directly creating around 500 jobs. A uh, simple rule of thumb of three to one for indirect jobs. Uh, this is also just, well, it's quite interesting. Uh, we, we, we spoke with the Gebana, uh, Gebana early on, mentioned and spoke about it. We were, um, it's, uh, it's a, a bit of a J-curve, so you can imagine this line has been flat for quite a long time. So this explains that it, it's, it's long-term term investment. You, you, you won't have results uh, fast. You have to wait. You have to be patient. You have to believe in what you are doing, and you will be able to, to harvest the fruits, but be patient. Uh, we had had a, a first curve, which was a, our first curve in 2003 when we had our first returns, and as you can, imagine, as you can see, this year we are, we are going to reach around 1.8 billion reais of sales, which is quite interesting. So it took us way longer than expected. We had to have an investor that has and sees in the long run. Because that is 14 years, so that's very, very long. Nobody wanted to invest in something like this. But if the idea is right and uh, 
the, the basin ideas right, and you believe in it, and you go and you push it all the way, you can see that there's a So also, just as a fast, just numbers, there are around 300 families that are directly involved with the Naturali, with the Axial. Uh, all our investments have reserves that are at least twice bigger than the legal size of the reserve that are, that, are, that are required by the law of Brazil. All our outputs of goods are managed so that we do not have an impact on the environment. Wildlife is, is protected. This is not just a, a story. If you want, you can find it this is in a book. So what we do is that we did um, we do a, one, one, all, all, all the reserve that we have, we, have a, we do a sensor of all the wildlife that is, that is when we started the work and we do a sensor after and we see what, had the, what, what, this, what was the impact of, of our work. So this is a book special uh, only on the, wild, on the wild birds of the farm of the Father of Guerre. Yeah. But we do that with the Life Institute in, the, in our farms and then you can see. Well, so now I'd just like to show you a fast video of Marita. So you, it's one of the investor companies, so you can have an idea why is the social impact that I accept. First, inspector about impact investing. It may be a buzzword today, but it's important. It's necessary. <laughs> Our planet needs it. We can't launch ideas, projects, and enterprises just to make money. There has to be a higher purpose, a higher dimension. This coming generation has key challenges to solve around water, around food, around energy, education, around access to finance to a larger group to name a few of them. When I started, none of this was understood. There was no debate, no public conscience, but today we know it. Second, as I told you the story of my great-grandfather, professional management. As an owner, and it's always not easy or simple, you have to put the most capable person in charge of your affairs. It may be a family member, it may be not. This is my great-grandfather understood by it very well ahead of his time and contributed to our prosperity. Third, you may not have the success that you deserve because you run ahead of your time, because you push an idea important to you that the market may talk about but does not yet embrace. Its time has not come. It is frustrating, it is painful, and you may not even be able to recoup all your investment. This is the curse of the pioneer of the two enthusiasts. Some of my ventures, some of my, some of my ventures ahead, of the, ahead of the time took, uh, and took very long time indeed, but are still alive. And today we are uh, really realizing that we were right. And the fourth and the most, also the most important, uh, important element is passion. You need to have it to take to the hits and lows that comes your way to keep moving. But more importantly, this is what drives other people to join you and take real part in your ventures. Thank you very much. That's all.